H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. This is Priya here from H2K Infosys and we'll get started with the session. So before I start, all of you please make note of my email address. It is priya at h2kinfosys.com and in case you have any sort of technical issues, you can contact us on this number 770-777-1269. Now, this is a software testing course that all of you have enrolled and then after the completion of this course, you'll be able to work as a software tester in the IT projects. And then before I start a couple of instructions to all of you, all the participants will be on mute. So if you have any questions, you're going to use a chat box. And whenever we are discussing something, you have to pay attention. Once I'm done, I'll give you some time to ask your questions and then to make your notes. So in today's session, we are going to discuss the basics here. The software engineering basics. Now, why this topic is included in your QA course? Because testing is not an independent activity. You'll have to interact with other members of the IT project team in order to do the testing. And moreover, being an IT professional, you should know how the IT projects are going to work. This is why we have included this particular topic in your QA course. Now every software that is developed, it should undergo the testing and then we have the different examples of the software here. The go to meeting software that you're using in order to connect to this meeting, it is an example of the software. You have the mobile applications, then the billing systems in Walmart and Macy's. Then we have the online shopping sites. Mobile applications and so on. So these are the different examples of the software. And in order to develop the software, we have to follow certain steps here. We call it as SDLC. SDLC means it is software development life cycle it is a step-by-step -step approach to develop the software okay so we have the different steps here we start with the requirement gathering then we have the planning and analysis then we have the design of the software development testing deployment and then we have the user acceptance testing so these are the different steps that we are following in order to develop the software in the IT projects now every software is different, the client is different, the requirements are different, the project scenarios are different and that is why we have the different approaches in order to develop the software and we call them as SDLC models. SDLC models means these are the standard approaches followed in order to develop the software. And who decides which model is to be followed in the project? It is decided by the project manager. So project manager is basically the head of the IT project team who will decide which model has to be followed in the project. Now in today's session, we will discuss the iterative or the incremental design processes. And here we will consider two examples. We have the spiral and then agile scrum. Okay, so we have the spiral model and then the agile scrum models okay so first we'll consider the spiral model here now this is how the spiral model looks like And 
and this kind of spiral model it is applicable for the complex projects so whenever we have the complex projects we go for the spiral model okay let me consider a general example let's say you want to construct your house you don't give all the information to the engineer at the same time right as and when the construction proceeds you give the information first you give the information about how many rooms you want what are the different features that you need and then how many floors you want so you give such kind of basic information as and when construction proceeds you give more and more detailed information regarding the interiors all right and also throughout the project you keep on changing the requirements you ask for the modifications and alterations right so this is how the complex projects are developed so similarly whenever we have the it projects that are very complex we don't get all the information from the client at the same time we get partial and incomplete requirements from the client and with this partial and incomplete requirements with the client we follow all the steps of the software development life cycle for every set of requirements and for every set of requirements we follow the planning analysis engineering means it is design and development and then we have the evaluation evaluation means it is testing okay so we have to follow all these steps of the software development life cycle for every set of requirements now we get the requirements we develop the software we get some more requirements and then we add some more features into the existing software all right so this is how the software is being developed and while we are adding these new requirements into the existing software we have to do the risk analysis now what is this risk analysis it is to check if the new requirements or let's say any kind of changes in the requirements are feasible to the existing software so we call this as risk analysis and since we are repeatedly following the same steps of the software development life cycle for every set of requirements this kind of models are going to be expensive and time consuming okay they are going to be expensive and time consuming and that is why this kind of projects sorry this kind of models are being used in the projects mm -hmm. like software that is being developed for a spacecraft safety critical systems like we have the air traffic control system fire alarm systems okay these are called as safety critical systems and also the softwares that have high risk of failure high risk of failure means even though there is a very small error and due to which if the software fails it can result into the huge loss now for example you consider a spacecraft project it is a very expensive project all right even if there is a very small or a minor error in the program that we write for the spacecraft and if the software fails then the loss is very huge okay a small error can lead to a very huge loss and such kind of projects we call them as the risk based project they have the high risk of failure all right and that is why we can use the spiral model now participants i'll give you a few minutes all of you please read the content on my screen if you have any questions please write your questions on the chat box so what you have to do is after we are done with the discussion i'll be giving you some time you have to take a screenshot of my screen and save it and then read the content on my screen word by word and understand and then if you have any questions you are going to ask your questions on the chat box okay yes everybody please take a screenshot and write your questions on the chat box i will wait for 4 minutes
these are the questions here from the chat box the point to again the risk analysis yes so whenever we are implementing the new requirements into the existing software so we have to make sure that the new requirements or let's say the changes do not break down the existing software the software that is already working okay so it should not again cause the failure of the working software and that's what we need to check during the risk analysis who estimates the feasibility of the changes it is done by the developers or the architects how the feasibility is estimated they will go through the existing design and then the programs okay and they will check whether implementing these requirements new requirements how it will affect the existing software what changes we will have to make in what programs they will have to make the changes they will check for it okay and then give the example of the high risk failure yes this is an example the spacecraft example it is a it is an example of the high risk of failure which model is more authentic in current projects in the current projects it is mostly the agile scrum that is being very commonly used due to the project scenario okay now we'll have a look at the agile scrum then this is an agile scrum model wherein we are developing the software module wise okay so here the software is being developed module wise we consider one module at a time in order to do the software development module means it is group of requirements so we consider one module at a time and then we follow all the steps of the software development life cycle here in order to develop the software okay so we have the development testing and then we release the software to the client the client will check the software and then they will give us the sign off or the approval so in case if they give us approval it means that they have accepted our module and then we go to the next module in case if they want any kind of changes then we are back into the loop implementing the changes over here okay we are back into the loop so this kind of model is used whenever we want to do the frequent changes in the requirements whenever the frequent changes are accepted in the requirements from the client side whenever we want to do the quick release of the software means we need not make our client wait till the entire software is developed as and when the modules are ready we can release it to the users and they start using we can go for the development of the next module whenever we have the new type or the new technology based software to be developed then we go for this kind of model and since it is a new type or a new technology based software that we are supposed to develop the developers will have to update their skills they have to learn this new technology and to update the skills what they require they require some kind of resources or the support documents here which are insufficient because the technology itself is new and that is why there are frequent technical issues in the team in order to resolve the technical issues in order to resolve the technical issues they will have the discussion with the other members of the it project team means the developers will have the discussions with the other members of the it project team the client and then the vendors of the technology okay 
and due to this kind of frequent technical issues there are possibilities that we might deviate from the project objectives we might frequently deviate from the project objectives project objectives in the sense it could be the schedule and then the budget of the project okay so all of you please go through this this is an agile model okay all of you please go through this this is an agile model all right i will wait for 4 minutes all of you please go through this let me know if you have any questions on the chat box okay these are the questions among the four stlc models which model there are not just four models first of all there are plenty of them okay but then we have taken a couple of examples over here all right and then based on the project scenario we have to choose a model actually okay see now for example if it's a simple project we cannot choose a spiral model that it becomes a, it becomes very expensive right so we have to choose the appropriate model all right and these days agile scrum is getting very common in the projects because of the project scenario okay and then any example yes see basically you cannot get the real time example the reason being unless you are being a part of the project you don't know what kind of model is followed who are the different people in the team what's the technology that they are using because all this is a project based information which will not be given to the outsiders okay but then just for your understanding i will give you an example if you consider the atm software we don't develop this entire atm software at once so first we will develop two features that is cash withdrawal and balance inquiry two features we will add and then we will release it to the client the end users will start using the software so once they are using this we can add more features for example pin change phone number updation okay so we can add more features over here all right and then again we release it to the end users so this is how the software can be developed the existing software will be under the production and also we can continue the development of the further features of the software how much time does it take and take um, to complete an average it project it depends again elena we can complete the projects in just 3 months or 6 months sometimes it can take about 3 years 4 years 5 years all right it depends on the project yes agile is mostly used we'll discuss okay what is the difference or let's say what is the relationship between this agile and agile scrum we will discuss to complete the cycle see there is a difference if you are considering the project elena the time is different cycle is a different because in every project there can be many cycles okay and how much each cycle duration can be again it depends on the scenario it can be from few weeks to few months okay few weeks to few months we can have the cycles and then the project it can be from few months to few years all right so there is a difference between the project and then the cycles okay now let's have a look at the agile scrum let's see what is the relationship between the agile and agile scrum so agile that i explained it is a framework and scrum is one of the methodology in the agile okay and software is developed in several incremental releases called as sprint so you can say sprint means it is one module i said the software is being developed module wise right okay so sprint means it is one module you can say wherein we will consider few features or the few requirements at a time and we follow all the steps of the software development life cycle and then we come up with a end product okay so we have a sprint 
and we have the few requirements for which we follow all the steps of the software development life cycle. And after every sprint, we have a potentially shippable product. Means this is a software that is ready to use. Okay. Then we have the different key roles over here. Product owner is a person who will decide on what features have to be implemented in a particular sprint. Scrum master will do the planning and controlling. And team is a technical team that is responsible for the completion of the project wherein we have the architects. We have the architects, okay, developers and then the QAs. Then we have the user stories who will decide or describe the feature. So user story means it is a two line description of the feature from the user perspective. And it is of a standard format. I need something so that I can achieve something. Means, for example, I need a login functionality so that I can view my account. So this is how it is supposed to be as per the standards, the two line description of the feature. But again, in the real time project, we can have more than two lines also. Okay, we can have more than two lines also in the real time project. So this is the agile scrum model. Now all of you please read this, go through this, I'll give you five minutes. If you have any questions, please let me know on the chat box. Everybody please make a note, read it carefully word by word. Any questions, please write your questions on the chat box. Okay. These are the questions. Key roles participants. We have the product owner, scrum master and then the product owner. Then we have the scrum master and then we have the technical team. Okay, so product owner means this person will decide what features are to be implemented in the software, okay? And what will be the priority of implementation of the features, okay? Scrum master will do the planning and controlling of the project. And then team, as I mentioned, it's a technical team that is responsible for the completion of the project. So Agile means you have to understand one thing here that we don't get all the information about the project at the same time. We are getting the requirements during the software development. And then what we do is we consider few features at a time and we develop the software. So we don't have a complete or you know very well set planning over here. We have to reorganize ourselves very frequently. The test cases have to be written, modified very frequently in the project, okay? We have to do the testing in many cycles over here. So basically there is continuous reorganization of the processes, okay? And we are developing the software here module wise. Entire software cannot be developed at once, okay? So we developed one module of the software, we release to the client. Another module is developed and then again we release the next one to the client. So this is how the agile model works okay it is module wise development you can understand that and what's the advantage of using this one the main advantage is it is applicable for the complex projects wherein we don't get the clear and complete requirements from the client and also the client wants the quick release means they don't want to wait until the entire software is ready okay as and when these software modules are available, we can release it to the client and then they can start using it. Every module is going to be most of the times independent one. Okay. More than one request at a time. Yes, you can implement. Okay, Saira. So these are the questions from the chat box. Now let's see what are the different steps that are followed in this Agile Scrum model. So this is the Agile Scrum workflow means these are the steps that are followed in the agile model. 
So first of all, the product owner will prepare a product backlog document. Product backlog document means This has a checklist of the different features that are to be implemented in the software. Okay, basically a checklist means what features are already implemented, what features are still pending. We keep a track here using this product backlog document and this task is done by the product owner. It's a checklist because continuously the client is changing the requirements over here. Okay, so we need to maintain this kind of checklist. And then we start with the sprint. So we consider few features over here or few requirements to be implemented and we start with the sprint wherein we have the sprint planning. Again, there is a sprint backlog. Backlog means it is a tracking document. Okay. So here, what are we tracking then? We are tracking the different activities of the project or a sprint you can say. And every sprint will be from two to four weeks or one to three weeks. In such a short duration, we should come up with the software and there are daily scrums that are conducted. These are daily update meetings that will be conducted. Not for a very long time, but let's say some 10 to 15 minutes, all the team members are going to meet to have the discussion. Okay, because we have to develop a software in a very short span of time. So we don't have a time to waste here if anybody is stuck somewhere, anybody has a problem in the team so that they can be discussed during the meeting here. Every day people are going to meet, okay, for 10 to 15 minutes to discuss on what is done and what is to be done in the future. And then we have potentially, potentially shippable product. So this is a software that is ready to use. And then we have the sprint review here. Means we have a team here, all right, who will present the product to the product owner. Then we have the retrospective. So retrospective means again, these are the meetings that will be conducted. So retrospective means it is a meeting, okay. And in this meeting, the team will discuss on what can be improved in the sprint. Okay, the team will discuss on the improvements in the sprint. So this is the agile scrum. You can go through this participants. Let me know if you have any questions in this one. All of you, please read this. If you have any questions, please ask. Yes, any questions participants please let me know
Any questions, participants? Okay, let me check the questions here. Sprint means it is one module or you can say the group of features or requirements that are to be implemented. And then we have the sprint, sprint review here. So here the team will explain or the team will present the product to the product owner. The team will explain about the product to the product owner, what they have done during the project, they will explain. Sprint backlog means, see basically backlog means it is a tracking document. Okay, it's a tracking document. So here sprint backlog means, here we are going to track the activities that are conducted in the sprint. What is the difference between the daily scrum and the retrospective? So these are the daily meetings. To track the updates. Retrospective also is a meeting but not conducted every day. It is conducted at the end of sprint. Wherein they will discuss what can be improved in the sprint. Okay, both of them are meetings, but in the agile, we do the module by module. When will the full project be done? After all the modules are completed. Okay, Sharma. So after all the modules are completed, we can stop the project. Yes, as and when we are implementing the new modules, you know, we have to actually check the compatibility and even after all the modules are done. As usual, we check the compatibility, okay? So now what is this iterative and incremental? See, iterative means it is repetitive or you can say the cycle, the dictionary meaning of iteration is a cycle. Dictionary meaning of increment is to add. So here, do you see we are developing the software in several cycles? That is why we call it as iterative means the software is developed in many iterations, okay? And in each of these iterations, we are adding the new requirements, means it is incrementing. That is why it is called as incremental or the iterative model, all right? So this completes today's session. This is what we had to discuss in today's class. We have discussed on the software development life cycle model under the iterative and the incremental SDLC models, the spiral and agile scrum. Now in the next session that will be in the next week, we are going to discuss the basic terminologies that are related to the software development and testing. And also we'll discuss some basics about the testing. Okay. The schedule you're going to receive it during the weekends from our training coordinators. And for today's session, I will send you the materials and videos. Okay. All right then. Um, Saira, the schedule will be sent in the email I said during the weekends. Okay. All right then. Thank you everyone and have a good weekend.